This week's episode is brought to you by Z Celebrate Shaman. And now, coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's the one, the only, Puckle Podcast. It's Puckle! Puckle! It's Puckle! Puckle! Pokemon under Gregory Champions League, oh yeah. Puckle! Puckle. And welcome to the 385th episode of the Puckle Podcast. I am your host, Trainer Thatch, here today with my excellent co-host. I didn't come up with an SAT word today, I'm so sorry. It's okay, um, I'll just feel not special. Yeah, I'm We have scrawn. the interrupting scrawn. <laughs> um, and of course, we've got the man who seemingly knows everything, R. Sigma. Hello. He is an omniscient being, indeed. And welcome to the Puckle Podcast. Puckle, of course, standing for the Pokemon Underground Champions League, a nonsensical name that I own and made up in 2007 when we used to play Pokemon in basements. That was the only place playing Pokemon was acceptable in 2007 was basements. It only took like 30 to 40 episodes for you to take ownership of the name back. Yeah, right? Yeah, I took it back. It's mine. <laughs> I, I'm actually kind of interested on the intellectual property law and of of uh, the Puckle name, because like part of me wants to say that the people who started the podcast with you still have some claim to it. The one other guy that started the podcast with me? Yes. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. since you've held on to it and used it, like, he's probably not, but it's really weird because intellectual property law is absolute garbage, in my opinion. Uh, to be fair, so welcome to the show if you're new. Welcome back if you're old. Uh, we've got a good show lined up for you today. I know people hate it when I do this, but this is for the new people. Uh, we're going to open up with just some chit chat. I have some comments about this intellectual property law that we'll talk about yes. here in a minute. Uh, and then... Uh, then we'll jump into some Pokemon news. From there, we're going to quiz your co-host on what they know about Pokemon. Scrawn might be able to win trivia th today and get some kind of Team Public shirt or something out of Don't it. Don't I have 28 or 29 points? You're at 28. You're at 28. Uh, the Sorry. trivia is not going to be nice to you today, though. Okay. And then we're also at... Uh, we're, we are also going to talk into uh, into a topic that's the title of the show today, where we're going to break down uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield's competitive scene and how we think that might play out. And then... We're going to wrap things up with the Pokemon of the episode and finalize all of that with uh, the mailbag where we're going to read your thoughts. But uh, we're going to – back to this intellectual property thing. So first of all, yes. uh, I still talk to Sycamore on a semi-regular basis. Uh, you, don't Sycamore, think that, you don't think he's going to come and try to take the podcast away from you? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. So he's actually, he's actually like really cool. I mean he was on the show a couple of years ago. Uh, I don't know if people remember this because like around Christmas I try to bank a couple episodes. And so the shows are typically a little bit different, and I'll ha grab somebody from my real life to talk about Pokemon with. Uh, like this Christmas, I already have I already have shows planned for this Christmas. <laughs> <Very> <laughs> it's cool. really bad. Uh, like I already have like some real life people set up so that we can just do shows early, and I can bank a couple episodes and take some time off during the holidays. But you guys still get content. And uh, so uh, one of the things though that I, I really really uh, talking talking to Sycamore though recently, he's actually really good about most of this. He's just like, man, it's really cool to see something that like we started get so big thanks to like the work that you're doing. So like, there's there's literally no animosity between the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> there's literally no animosity when it comes to the show because he like, I, I think he's kind of over it right now too to an extent. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, he, he was out of Pokemon for a while until I think Pokemon Go came back out. Yeah, I guess. So that, that, that's the big thing. Like, when Pokemon Go came back out, he came back to it. And even then, he's only into it, like, to an extent. I don't think he's into it where we were back in, I don't know, 2008, 2009. Yeah, is a cool guy. Okay. Yeah, he, no, he was really nice. But what, what have you guys been up to lately? What have you guys been up to? I did, uh, so yesterday they had a surprise Pokemon Go event where it was like a legendary happy hour with Latios and like at around 6 p.m. local time, just every gym had a Latios egg on it. So I did a raid train yesterday and caught like mm. five Latios. <laughs> That's good. It was a good time. No shinies though. Uh, no shinies. That's sad. Apparently there was like a good Friday dinner thing going on. 
Oh, that's what yeah. it was. It's something like that. That's I feel like that's just like a really odd time. I don't know. Like so so for those of you at home, like I am Catholic and so like for for good night, Friday fr- dinner, it's always kind of weird because I don't know. I I expect it to be like a solemn time, and I wouldn't be like, "Yeah, man, let's go play Pokemon Go while I'm still starving." Because as a Catholic, you're supposed to you're supposed to Catholic fast. That's what I call it. Yeah, um, and I'm sure there's going to be some theologian who's going to get mad at me about calling it a Catholic fast or something. But like, it, our fasting's different than like I would say like something in Islam. It, it, this is this is what everybody wanted out of a Pokemon podcast, by the way. It was an explanation of how religion works. Whenever I play Pokemon Go, I try to play corresponding music to the Pokemon <laughs> I'm trying to catch. So I was driving around yesterday, and because like Latios is a fast Pokemon, I was playing Eurobeat of all things. So like initial D, da, 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 la, la, you know, like stuff like that, and like blasting it out of my windows and. One of the gyms that we did was right in front of a Catholic church, and now I feel awful. Oh my oh, god! I wouldn't. I wouldn't feel bad about doing a raid in front of a Catholic church. <laughs> uh, I think. I think the bigger thing is just like I don't know. For me, it's supposed to be solemn. Uh, you're also supposed to be hungry like the entire day, uh, but you are allowed to eat. It's supposed to be uh, two small meals that don't add up to a regular size meal, and then one regular size meal. So okay. like you're supposed to be, uh, and then also still like the no meat thing because it's it's the end of. Uh, well, it's technically not Lent anymore on Good Friday. It's a it's a different season in the Catholic Church. It's the shortest season in the Catholic Church, um, and probably in some other Christian religions as well. Um, but also, but it's uh it's called the Easter Triduum, hmm. and so like it, we're no longer in Lent. Like we're recording on Saturday. It's not Lent. Thank you for the informative religious lesson. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's what you. <laughs> also, Arceus is the god of Pokemon, and there's a church in Diamond and Pearl. <laughs> right. uh, I learned that from a house episode. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there a perch? Uh, I mean, not, what church in uh, Sun and Moon in like Iki Town as well? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Uh, I didn't ever. I I don't know off the top of my head though. I can't. I can't make that claim. Okay. So don't don't quote me, but yeah, I, I mean I I understand. So how about you, Sigma? Anything anything new? Anything interesting? Uh yeah, like this past week the PFTT started. So, oh yeah, that's true. And the TCG tournament started. So the PFTT for those of you at home is the Prepare for Trouble tournament uh, that we do every year at Puckle. It's our yearly annual VGC tournament. Just come play, have fun. It's a good time. What was the turnout for that, by the way? It was like probably like sixteen. Sixteen. Or something. Yeah. 16 is fair. I think for that, that's the, probably the biggest turnout we've ever had for PFTT. I'm yeah, that's lie. a good number, too. It makes it nice and even for the yeah. rounds. Mm-hmm. Good way to so. get some points. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. I, I forgot to sign up, and I also just didn't want to put together. I Man, VGC, I have this like love-hate relationship with. I Whenever I need a palate cleanser from OU, like I'll jump to VGC, and like I'll be like, cool, this is a new meta. This is something really interesting to learn. But then... Unless like unless I'm burned out on the singles though, there is just no reason for me to care about VGC. Because <laughs> I'm just like I'm just like I don't care about it. I'm not going to go to any tournaments. Uh, I just I just don't care. Uh, uh, the general consensus around Ultra Series has been that it's an absolute mess, a hyper offensive mess. <laughs> it's about right. Worry. L- let me just say, worry seed whimsicott is viable to an extent. <laughs> and so and soaking Shedinja. <laughs> Worry Seed Whimsicott was actually used pretty significantly in the 2016 meta. And I, I don't know. If we if we were to think about that meta at all, the the Ultra Series meta, I think this is what we all originally thought was going to be the meta right out the gates for 2019. And everybody's like, oh it's so cool that Pokemon's doing three different metas this year. And it's like, no, they did it because they didn't want the whole thing to be a mess. Like because it it would it would devolve faster than the 2016 meta. The 2016 meta devolved pretty fast. And, Absolutely. <laughs> and you would have seen this one just dissolve, devolve, uh, devolve. It like would be done by quickly. Christmas. Yeah, yes. it would have been done by Christmas. Everybody would have figured it out, and then maybe you get some kind of rando team at Worlds. And, and I've been seeing people it. get burnt out after the each individual season. <laughs> like for the first two months, it's like, oh yeah, this is fun. New metas are constantly evolving, but by the last two, it's like. We want the next one to come so we can stop playing this team. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, they kind of just devolve really fast when it gets to, like, uber-powerful Pokemon like this, because, especially with, like, Ultra Necrozma. Ultra Necrozma's horrible. Uh, uh, I think it's, I, you it's, know, not, it's not as bad as, like, the Primals. Like, the Primals are back, too. Yeah, so, the like, Primals that, are worse, that, yeah. The Primals are just as bad. 
Uh, Mega Rayquaza being able to hold Z crystals. I mean, that's can't, not helping. And it doesn't. It's not actually a thing. They yeah, made I, it so you can't have a Z crystal with Mega Rayquaza. Oh, uh, they made it good, perfect, excellent. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank God. I mean, there, there's just like a lot there that it just makes me not want to touch with the ten foot pool. Like I understand, like 2016 was an okay season. I got into it a little bit. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't great. I'll, I'll say that much, but I got into it a little bit. Um, 2017 was, I, I think 2017 was an okay meta. I just didn't like it because it never semi-centralized like a good meta should. It's like, here's Karchomp, here's Arcanine, figure out what else you're running with Delta Beast and Tapus and Tapus. Yeah, like it, it, it was, it was kind of cyclical. It was just like, what are people playing? And it, like, it comes full circle eventually. And, uh, it was, it was definitely like a very, it was, it was a more complicated rock, paper, scissors, like which team beats which. Yeah. Um, and then the 2017 wasn't terrible. Uh, I wouldn't say 20, uh, or 20, 2018 wasn't terrible. I was out okay of, with 2018. Out of all the years, the regional dex years are really the best. And I think honesty. pre-Intimidate Incineroar was better for 2018. I agree with oh. that. <laughs> what? Yeah, no, okay. That was so, an actual thing. <laughs> okay. Pre, Pre-Intimidate, <laughs> Pre-Intimidate Incineroar was great. Uh, Incineroar, I mean, if you're talking about Pokemon meta now, I mean, because I think even if we were to go back to like the 2017 meta that Scrawn loves so much, oh uh, because it's a regional Dex year, um, I think if you were to go back with that and then you would, were to have Intimidate Cineroar in that, you would hate it. No, okay. absolutely. It's like, oh, let's have an Arcanine that has Fake Out. Yeah, that's it's, pretty, it's pretty much like Arcanine with Fake Out, and that's what you get. Plus Dark Typing yeah, it's and miserable. all of the, you know, debuffs that Dark Typing comes with. <laughs> debuffs? De- like knockoffs. Like knockoff. Yeah, and stuff exactly. Like that. You get knockoff. You can't be prankstered. Yep. That's something that people don't remember. Like that's the mechanic that nobody remembers is that you can't be prankstered if you're a dark type. And it's uh, it, it's, it's it, really that's nice. huge. It yes, actually played, it, it actually played a role in one of the world's championship matches. So. Mm-hmm. And that's any like that's moves altered by prankster as well. So like a thunder wave used by a prankster Pokemon doesn't work on a dark type. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Like Whimsicott using its Z nature power or whatever it is. <laughs> where, it, yes. where it focuses on what the terrain is. Dark types are just immune to that. Yeah. Yep, yep. All right. This sounds like a great place to stop. We're going to kick it on over, though, to the news because there are, is some news to talk about. We will cue that epic music. <laughs> Town Radio Tower. This just in. And welcome to the news. The news is got actually things in it today. I'm pretty excited. First of all, you can get shiny Meltan again in Pokemon Go from April 24th to May 5th from the mystery boxes, and they can also reset in three days instead of seven, which is great. This is the event that will automatically make the mystery boxes available to you if you don't have Let's Go, right? I don't think so. Oh. Then I'm still out of luck. <laughs> I'm sorry that you don't have a mystery box because you're so against that game. I'm sorry I didn't buy a bad game. <laughs> <laughs> Go buy it used or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for 50 bucks? Nothing. Yeah, I think this weekend's also got a shuckle event in Pokemon Go, but it'll be over by the time the show's out, so I'm sorry. Yeah, they'll still be in the wild. It'll be in the wild, yeah. It, you can get shiny shuckle maybe one day. Maybe one day. <laughs> one day. One day. Uh, also, TCG announced their rotation already, which I found really interesting. It's going to be Ultra Prism on, and it's going to be starting before Worlds. It starts like the day before Worlds. It starts August 15th. What? So Worlds is going to have to follow the new rules? Yeah. Yes. Oh my goodness. That's going to be a mess. I'm so excited. Isn't it? <laughs> Isn't it? Oh. I saw a lot of comments when I saw this happen, and a lot of people were just like, oh man. I really, Worlds was the place where we'd always say, like, goodbye to, like, uber-powerful decks. And it's just like, but not really, because you just have, like, one new set. So, like, who cares? Uh, <laughs> Zoroark will not be missed. Zoroark will not be missed. Uh, I don't think we'll, I don't know if we'll see DCE in it. I mean, DCE is not in this rotation currently, right? Uh, DCE is leaving, right, as of right now. Yeah, right now. I mean, unless it's in the next set, which I don't think it's going to be in the next set. There's triple colorless for basic Pokemon. <laughs> no, it's for evolved Pokemon, but yes. Oh, evolved Pokemon. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be really weird. I, I don't know. It's, it's going to be a weird meta. They just, they're keep they they're knocking out a lot of things that I say, saw as staples, but granted, I haven't been playing the TCG for like over a year. 
Yeah, Ultra Ball is going to be a big one. Too, yeah, I heard so. Ultra Ball is leaving too. Like, what's up with that? And I mean, granted, I think you'll see a lot of these cards at least come back. Like, maybe they'll have a small hiatus, but they'll come back with the initial Sword and Shield set that comes out. I can see that. I, I can see us having like, because that's what kind of what happened with N, with the early X and Y rotation. Yeah, and stuff like Versus Seeker and such. Exactly. They saw that, oh man, the meta kind of sucks without these. Let's put them back in. They just waited like a set or two. And then they took them out again. <laughs> yeah, well, ends back to an extent, right? I think there's that yes. new card, like the stamp. Yeah, there's a new item that can do what N does to your opponent. So. Yeah, it essentially is like half an N, but an item. So it's it's not too bad. They're they're doing all right. I think that I think they're doing okay. Minus tag team Pokemon. I think tag team Pokemon was a terrible idea. Last podcast, you were saying how much you appreciate it and like it. <laughs> that's not true at all. I, that's not true. You were talking about the Articuno Moltres Zapdos. Oh, part? oh, in terms of, in terms of like cool artwork and stuff. Okay. that's fine. But in terms of <laughs> actual TCG play, I think tag team was awful because what, the one thing that I really appreciate about GX is when GXs first came about in Sun and Moon, was that, oh, cool, we're slowing down the meta because we don't have these uber-powerful, like, 250 HP mods you can just plop down as a base. <laughs> now we have uber-powerful 300, 300 HP, HP. Yeah, it's like minimum tag team HP is, like, 240, 250 now. So, like, it, it's just absolutely gross. And I was I was really excited to see that not be a problem anymore, but it's obviously not true at all. <laughs> mm-hmm. They sticking around for a while, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they'll probably here, be here for the entire year. Yes. So. Yes. <laughs> also, the next wave of Amiibo has been dated. Uh, we're going to get... The, the the only reason I talk about this is because, one, I collect Amiibo, but two, it's also all Pokemon. So we're going to be getting uh, we're gonna be getting Pichu and the male Pokemon trainer in the next wave, which is slated for release on, I believe, July 26th. Very nice. So you can, you can pick up Pichu and the Pokemon trainer. I'm really sad that we... Did we not get a Bulbasaur and a Squirtle? Uh, not yet. Not yet. I think we will. I think we will if there's a Charizard. We've seen them. Yeah, we've seen them and they exist. I was really expecting Pokemon Trainer, Squirtle, and Bulbasaur to come in some sort of three-pack. I was expecting the three-pack for that one, too. I do like the VS Seeker on the Pokemon Trainer Amiibo. That's right. Cool. They're doing really well with these Amiibo. I'm also really happy with these releases compared to the original Amiibo releases. Because originally the... Like, now they're only doing, like, three Amiibos at a time. That's so much nicer. They don't have to do more because they didn't add, you know, a terrible amount of new characters, so... Well, no, I like three I like three at a time, and then you're also doing, like... And they're not store-specific. Yes. They also up the price of them, so they're a lot more detailed than the original run. Yes. These are, like, I've been really happy with the ones I've gotten so far from the new runs. I mean, like, I think it's only six so far. I think it's, like, Ice Climbers, Piranha Plant... King uh, K. Rule. The last one was Ken, which was all right. I'm not too excited. Daisy and Young Link. I don't think I was too wild about the last one, but uh, this one I'm going to be excited for. Might actually get the snake one so I can do an impersonation around <laughs> people like, Colonel, I've been turned into plastic. I feel like you can do that without buying the amiibo. But but I, I'll have like a visual aid this way. And I'll- <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, moving on, uh, I think you can also get the uh, 10-inch Bulbasaur very soon at Target uh, from Funko, so check that out. And I think the uh, the egg event, it started in Pokemon Go. Yep, there's like a day and a half left when you're listening yes. to this, if you listen to it on Monday. Mm-hmm. So that's still going on. Other than that, we're just getting hyped for Detective Pikachu and uh, hopefully some Sword and Shield news soon. Pika Pika. Pika May is approaching. Pika. <laughs> May is approaching. I think May, we're absolutely going to get something. This is like the calm before the storm of hype. I absolutely believe we're going to get something. We don't really know what to expect, but we know it's coming. It's like Game of Thrones. Winter is coming. <laughs> the dragon Pokemon are coming. We promise. Actually, I think it's a steel type, but... The, not steel, sure. the steel Pokemon are coming. <laughs> we're absolutely going to get news in May. Like, I will claim this up and down, because if you just look at the pattern of the way we got Sun and Moon news, this is following exactly that. We're going to end up getting the announcement like we did in in the end of February, where they're going to wait a little bit to just kind of let it settle in. Then right before E3 in May, we're going to get some kind of news. Then E3 is going to happen. We're going to get a little bit more news. And then pretty much like every three, four weeks, we're going to get something new. 
And it's going to be great because it's going to be like, oh, look, new Pokemon. And then somebody, somebody's going to go, I wish they wouldn't spoil the whole decks. And, <laughs> and they don't. They just spoil all the marketable ones. Yeah. Well, no, actually, in Sun and Moon, I think they did almost everybody. But like, I, I don't know who they didn't do. I think they missed like one or two. But they uh, almost they did missed everybody. like four, I think. Duke Piter and Araquanid, which was really cool to find in game. That's Delmice, true. because you're not selling plushies of that. And Crabominable, because you're not selling plushes of that. Okay, ever. so that's where you're wrong. I would buy both of those. Um, <laughs> dude, if I could get a Delmize plush, even honestly, like a Delmize action figure where like you can press a button and it like shoots the anchor out with the chain and everything, I'd buy that. I want some possessed moss that eats whales. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, they don't spoil the non-marketable Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's, uh, that's, that's a good place to wrap it up. We got some Puckle Pokey quiz for you guys, so let's kick it on over. We're going to quiz your co-host and maybe see Scrawn cross the finish line in the next uh, segment where we quiz your co-host on their innate Pokemon knowledge. And welcome to Puckle's Poke Quiz, the part of the show where we quiz your co-host on their innate Pokemon knowledge. This segment of the show is brought to you by AnimeGravy.com, where you can check out some cool, original, anime-inspired prints, and also mugs and other crazy other stuff. Tapestries, got. probably. <laughs> yeah, and they've got some stuff, but you can go check it out. <laughs> this is the part of the show that we're going to quiz your co-host. We have five Pokemon-related trivia questions for them to answer. You can try to play along at home. Uh, maybe they're too smart for you. I don't know. Uh, Scrawn and Sigma today are going to be operating as a team together where they are going to be answering the questions. They are in a race against their fellow co-host who 30 points. Whoever hits 30 points first gets a $20 credit to the T public store, Puckle T public store where they can get uh, something of $20 ish value. Uh, so first of all, Scrawn's at 28 points. So there's a good chance he gets here today because we have five questions, each worth one point a piece. One of these questions has a bonus point. And if you get all the questions correct, you get seven points. Uh, you, without using the hint, you get seven points. Bring it, Thatch. I hope they're hard. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, if Sigma helps him cross the finish line today, because Sigma is not at 28 points, Sigma gets to take his points into the next trivia cycle. So, uh, these questions are not easy, mind you, because we're going to see if we can make you earn that whatever thing from Tee Public that you might want. My body is ready like Reggie. Let's do so this. here we go. Question number one. What Pokemon is classified as the synthetic Pokemon? Oh, boy. Um, so I want to... The first things that come to mind are Porygon and Cast Form, R Sigma. What do you think on that? Uh, I was leaning towards Type Null and Silvella, so... Oh, that's true. Hmm. That actually sounds right. Um, I don't I... know which one, though. I'm trying to think of their species names, uh, because Porygon is the... I don't even know. <laughs> is it data, maybe? A what? Is it a data Pokemon, maybe, or something? It's probably not Porygon. Oh, uh, Castform's the forecast Pokemon, so I'm going to say it's probably uh, Type Null or Silvalli or some. Isn't, like, Type Null, like, the armor Pokemon or something? It is the armor one. It's also, like, the one they focus on because i'm not sure if they okay. knew Silvalli existed since there were only three in existence and two of them are frozen or one of them is still frozen it's weird hmm i'd probably say Silvalli. that seems like a reasonable guess seems fine to me you're the one this matters for <laughs> hey i'm trying to get you some points man all right let's go to Silvalli. Silvalli is correct it's also type null is correct as well Sweet. Uh, oh, so okay. they're because they're, they're both the same Pokemon. Like Type Null is just Silvalli with a helmet on. Like <laughs> no thatch, they're different. <laughs> it's just a little slower. It's got it's slower armor. because it's, it's got fine. a huge ha helmet on. Like that's the only reason. All right, so that's one point. You're still one away, Scrawn. Yes! Let's see if you can get anything else. So this next question, there. I need all three types for you to get the point. Okay. Currently in the anime, what are the three types of Pokemon that Ash has never caught? Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. Never uh, caught. I should make that distinction. Caught. So, oh my goodness. So like if he's gifted something or something like that. He has to have had this Pokemon in a Pokeball. Uh, okay. So the my first guess is going to be 
so there's no redundancies, uh, electric, because he never caught Pikachu. Um, and because of that very loud hint at the beginning, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to say no, absolutely not. That's not the, I'm going to tell you right now you're on the wrong idea. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. Um, so like if a Pokemon evolves into something then that doesn't count or no, that counts too. He has to have owned this Pokemon. Okay. I just wanted some clarification. All right. Um, Ooh, uh, this is hard. Okay. So it's not dark. It's not uh ice it's not grass it's not water it's not fire i can know what it's not but i don't know maybe it's steel i can't think of any steel off the top of my head um same i don't very steel maybe um um maybe um, no it's not bug it's not flying definitely not normal because all the birds okay so we're thinking steel like I want to say he had a fairy, but, like, I, I can't think of any, so I'm probably going to say It fairy. would have been a retcon fairy if he had one. Yeah, I'm going to say fairy, uh, because he never actually did catch Jigglypuff. Uh, so I'm going to say steel fairy, and he's had fighting, probably. Yes, Scrafty. Um, so steel fairy, and... Uh, he's had dragon. Oh, yes. Uh, he has had dragon. Good whole uh, Gibble and Gudra. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, oh, man. Is it ghost? No, he's had a haunter uh, and a poison. He didn't catch a haunter. Oh, he didn't catch a haunter. And that's the only ghost he's had. So, yeah, steel, fairy, ghost. That will be our answer, I guess. Are you okay with that? I mean, it's your Poke Quiz to win. Hey, no, you're in this too. <laughs> don't you don't you put that on me. All right, I'm going with it. Steel, fairy, ghost, that. Let's see. That is unfortunately incorrect. Oh! The answer is Psychic, Ghost, and Fairy. Steel was actually on the list until very recently, to be fair. Psychic. Um, okay. Ash has recently caught a Meltan, though. Oh, I didn't know he actually caught that in a ball. Yeah, he oh. actually caught it. <laughs> oh, good for him. Yeah. So, uh, pretty close, though, Scron. Pretty close. But no cigar. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. That was a good question. Yeah. Next next question is a Pokedex entry, because I like doing these, because one, they're easy, and uh, Uncle Oshawott feeds them to me. So, it's Pokemon Y entry reads, Even in the fiercest wind, it can control its fluff to make its way to any place in the world at once. Who's that, mm. Pokemon? <laughs> <laughs> there are two. You get to pick which one. Right. So, like, Altaria or, like, Whimsicott oh. or Codme. Is Altaria even in the decks? It's probably not Altaria. It's either Cottony or Whimsicott. <laughs> <laughs> you got two choices. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Um, okay. Well, I feel like that would try to throw us off by making us think it's Whimsicott, because we always ask Whimsicott, so I'm going to say Cottony. <laughs> Cottony is incorrect. Oh, uh, the answer is no. actually Jump Bluff. Okay. Oh. Okay. That, that makes sense. Because uh, Whimsicott can't actually, like, decide where it goes. It kind of just oh. rides the wind. <laughs> Jumpluff can actually control where it goes. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. It's Skiploom and it's Hoppip that fly in the wind without yeah. knowing what's yeah. happening. But it doesn't. Mm. All, it also doesn't have fluff either. True. It doesn't have fluff. Yeah. Only Jumpluff has fluff in that line. Okay. All right, so you're still you still at one point, Scrawn. You you're still got to get uh, one more to cross that finish the, line. I'm feeling the heat now, Fash. <laughs> <laughs> All right, question number four. This is your bonus point. This has a bonus point. There are two answers. You get one point for each answer, so you can you can cross that finish line in style if you get both of them. What are the only two non-bug-type Pokemon that can learn Twin Needle? Or I should say lines, because some of these Pokemon evolve. Ooh, two... But these are by Egg Move. They, they learn Twin Needle by Egg Move. Two bug-type Pokemon, non-bug-type Pokemon that learn Twin Needle. Okay. So it is. Not Nogginadel. Okay. Um, uh, can I get a... Can we use our hint here? I think... I suppose, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, can. Let's use our hint. Uh, these are not bug-type Pokemon. Um, <laughs> well, you said uh, that! <laughs> uh, one of them is... Uh, one, oh, man. Let me... I don't want to, like, give this away. Because uh, this is a good question. And give you don't away. deserve being... You don't deserve give-me's on the, on the finish line, okay? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I used my hint. Darn it. <laughs> uh let's see so one of these pokemon has uh has spikes so it makes it use twin needle probably with the spikes um and then the other pokemon um let's see 
this other Pokemon is from Generation 1. One's from Generation 1 and one's from Generation 7. That's what I'll say. Hmm. Okay. Ooh. Uh, okay. So Generation 1, the thing that comes to mind is, like, Amastar. Uh, do you have any thoughts? I mean, it's not Jolteon, because you said they were... Are they both egg moves? Uh, they are... Both these Pokemon learn it via egg moves, yes. Okay. okay. So, hmm. So it's not Jolteon. So it would need to be, like, in the... I don't know what field field group the Beedrill's in. Um, I wonder if one might be Toxapex? Oh, yeah. Huh, yeah. Okay. But if I don't it's an know. egg move, then Marini would also be in it. So that would I said I said a line. I don't care. Oh, some, okay. of the, some of the, some of these evolve. Okay. I'm gonna say Amistar and Toxapex then. Are those your final answers? Yes. That is unfortunately incorrect on both accounts. What? No. <laughs> the answer no! the answer is Shelter and Toga Demaru. Shelter. What? <laughs> uh... Shelter gets twin needle. Isn't that great? <laughs> Why does Shelter get it? Uh, <laughs> Isn't that weird? It gets it through, like, Scorapy. Uh, all right. And, based and on that question. All right. Uh, so this is where this is for all the peanuts here, Scrum. Oh, no. Uh, you have to cross the finish line here with this question. Um, and you're probably going to want Sigma's help on this one. Sigma! Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, there's only one Electro-type Pokemon with this particular base stat total. And this base stat total is 430. Oh, God. <sighs> Sigma knows the answer. Uh, and it's... It, so this... What Electrotype Pokemon is the only ba- one to have a base stat total of 430? Be a merciful god on this day, our <laughs> Sigma. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a Pika clone, but... Which Pika clone? Oh, no. Okay, so it's probably not Togu Tomorrow, since we just talked about that one. Um... And Molga, Pachirisu, and that could be plus or minus because they'd be the same. Uh, and they'd be garbage. Yeah, uh, Gen two was Pichu, this is Gen three, it's a four. Pachirisu so, or a Molga is what comes to mind, or yeah. technically Dedene. Or... <laughs> Dedene is Dedene like less than that, or I feel like it's got an odd number for some reason, but I'm not sure on that. Okay. So, so I'm going to make a clarification and say this is a particular form of an electric type Pokemon. Oh. Oh. Um, because you're just going to go down the wrong rabbit hole. <laughs> Rotom then, maybe? What? Rotom without uh, a form? This, hmm. is, this is a particular form that is exclusive to one particular game. Oh. Oh, it's that, isn't it? <laughs> oh. Sigma. we need to reset the trivia. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this is this that game that Scron didn't play? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh-huh. Okay, I think we figured it out. But okay, you figure it out. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Scron can figure it out. It's whether you're a merciful god today, Sigma. <laughs> uh, oh no. <laughs> I don't think he knows that it has a different stat total in that game. He doesn't. He doesn't know. <laughs> this is... This is... Why are you bullying me? <laughs> oh. I didn't ask you a manga question today, to be fair. Um. Oh, no. I was... I had two of the ones on the... Other, on the stats stuff. <laughs> uh, come on. What's... Oh, man. Oh, uh, just be a merciful god, Sigma. Let him, him, please. Let, we've let him struggle. <laughs> It's partner Pikachu. Partner Pikachu? Partner yeah. Pikachu is correct. It is uh <laughs> in Let's Go in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, both the partner Pikachu and the partner Eevee have different base stats to make them better than normal. And so Pikachu actually has a unique base stat total in that game of four hundred and thirty. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That, that Regular Pikachu good. have different base stats, but the partner Pikachu has has uh has a particular base stat. So it is the most Pika clone of the Pika clones. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> it is. You're uh, exactly right. So, Scron, that gives you two points, which gives you 30 points total and woo! crosses crosses the finish line. And in the next one, Sigma's winning uh, because he's got two points. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but so, Scron, what are you going to buy with your T-Public money? 
Uh, probably a tapestry to give to Seth or something. Give it to Seth? <laughs> yeah, because he, he wanted the tapestry so much. I mean, okay. if he wants okay. it, I'll... That's fair. You could make him earn it. All right. So that is going to be it for this this segment of Puckle's Pokey Quiz. We are going to catch you next week with another seg- segment of it. We are going to take a short break and be right back at you with the topic. And since you guys apparently liked it, we're going to be doing more iTunes reviews in this segment instead of your normal social media commercial. So thanks to Squanty Python for his, the five-star review. Uh, great podcast, but... You should listen to this because it's hilarious. Episode 188, 11 minutes to 1151 in half speed. It's hilarious. Side note, I have listened to it there. I don't know what it's, uh, what the funny thing is. It's just me talking about how you could put a Pikachu face on a credit card. Uh, next one from, uh, I'm going to pronounce this wrong. Pulley sick lover. Great podcast. Have been a Pokemon fan since I was five years old, 14 years later, and I'm still a fan. Probably an even bigger fan. Love everything these guys are doing. Thanks for that. And then also another one we got this week from Bubba 41308 Man, this podcast is funny. My friend and I are doing a battle of each gen. Whoever wins each gen essentially gets to decide which starter gets to be used in the next gen. This is how I ended up with Chikorita. And I think it's supposed to be a, a, a frowny face. Anyway, listening to this podcast has helped boost my battling skills to beat him using Pokemon I've never tried before. Most importantly, become a patron. You get Neato Shinies, and you get to support this amazing podcast. Thank you to all three of you for these five-star reviews. If you want your review read on the podcast, go leave one. iTunes, great place to do it. Helps out the show a lot, though, as well, if you go do it. We appreciate it. So thanks to you guys, and we're going to get you on over to the next part of the show. And welcome to the topic. Our topic today is going to be, how will the competitive scene work with Pokemon Sword and Shield? I feel like we've talked about this before, Sigma. I don't know if it was on, on air or not. Maybe it was on Battlecast. I thought it came up, like, last time I was on, too, when we did the grab bag episode. Yeah, but that's usually... But it was only just... slightly. Yeah, so. we we like to... Sigma and I talk about this on a pretty regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting topic, because there are a lot of questions about it. Uh, it's also just because Sigma and I have very similar feelings on the VGC scene. Well, hopefully I can disrupt those feelings. <laughs> uh, maybe. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you're going to be able to do that. But, uh, yeah, so welcome welcome to this segment where we're going to talk about that. And so I think the biggest thing that we should just, like, we, I, I want to start the conversation off with, like, VGC is a, is a good format. I think there are plenty of people who play it who are great people to play it. Um, I do think some parts of the community are somewhat toxic. Um, and that is probably what Sigma and I don't like the most is that there are definitely parts of the community that are toxic. I like when I went to St. Louis, I definitely met good people and I met bad people and I would say, and I met some people in the middle. (laughs) So like it it all exists. I just don't like the toxic people. I don't know. There shouldn't have been bad people. That's something that will exist in any competitive environment. As if there is a reward on the line, people were going, there are going to be people who are not sportsman. Like I think the issue here is that the population is so low that the concentration is higher than other communities. Yes, I think that's the answer. Um, I think it also doesn't help that, uh, I mean, this isn't, this isn't, um, something that's just like, oh, hey, like you're going to have toxic people anyway. I think it also doesn't help that, um, TPCI has the Pokemon circuit set up in such a way that, one, you have to be rich to be able to go to these events. And then they also offer stipends to help people travel. But that travel stipend is just won by the people who can pay for the events anyway. And so, like, the people who don't need the help keep getting free travel. Unfortunately, that is uh, that is a problem because they do leave it up to the venue's discretion to exactly. charge what they want to do, to do. And, like, oftentimes those admission fees will come with, like, say, an exclusive play mat or, you know, a coaster and, like, a mug or something. But, like, most of the people don't really want that stuff and it's because it costs pennies to make, really. Exactly. Um, and I, I mean, there, so there's like the money issue in, involved with that. And I don't know. I mean, I mean, that's kind of like, that's where I am on that. I mean, I'm not saying that I hate Pokemon or I hate the Pokemon community or anything because there are good players. I just think you have a higher than average concentration of people who are somewhat toxic. But yeah, pay, paying $50 to get into an, a one day event and most yes. likely losing is not worth it for most people and i think it's a bit of a problem however the hardcore people uh who do go to like every event will be there and like those are the people who are more likely to win because they play this game day in and day out you know it, it, it kind of 
it's kind of egregious to an extent in my opinion i i I, well i think it's also partially i mean if we want to if like i don't want to talk about this much longer because i want to i want to shoot this in a more positive light um i i i think it's also uh not not just that you're gonna have the same people who are like just they're really careful about i think it's just kind of antithetical to what pokemon is because pokemon's supposed to be this game that's like really great for people to come and play and like it's supposed to be very inclusive i mean i mean that's why you have five friends in x and y right and they're annoying as hell, but like you have them. Uh, <laughs> Tiano <and> can dance. <laughs> he can dance. Look at the, look at that. Look at that clauncher. Um <laughs> That is his only only quality to him. <laughs> he can dance and he's fat. <laughs> <laughs> he has a vanilla oh. he has a vanilla on his shirt. <laughs> yeah. To be we fair, don't. he has a cool shirt. But I feel like that's 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 kind of like the problem. I think I feel like it's somewhat antithetical to like the actual Pokemon attitude. Um, but I let's let's move on. Let's move on to like happy times. One last addendum: they did increase the championship requirements for even VGC players this year. They did. It's like a hundred points more, which is what is it? What is it? What is it this year? What, I think it's still or, you need four hundred championship. Points. It's always been four hundred championship points for VGC. We're uh, around there. That's crazy. If you like, don't go to like every event. It's it's not so it's not it's actually not that bad. It's not that bad. They've gotten better about it recently, um, because with with player with PCs and mid season sh- mid season showdowns were the real big one that helped out, um, because you can go to mid season showdowns and you can realistically get fifty to ninety points pretty easily if, from a mid season showdown. And then on yes. top of that, if you win a regional, you get four hundred points. It um, isn't that bad if your area has people who can run those events. But like the I agree. PCI application to hold those events, it takes forever to process, and then mm-hmm. there's a very good chance that they'll still reject you. <laughs> no, I I do agree with that. I mean, if you if you're not in an area where you can have a Pokemon scene, like it, it's awful. And I think that's I think that's where this is a great segue because this is something that Sigma and I have discussed very heavily. <laughs> <laughs> and this is something that I think is uh, is an interesting point to bring up because you go, oh man, why pe- more people can't play because they can't go to local events. They're forced to go to regionals. They're forced to pay more money to be able to compete. And I think this is where Sword and Shield can come in and save the day. And that's because it's almost logistically impossible to run something like a regional with with Sword and Shield. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a logistical nightmare. So is this the part where you think it's all gonna be online? Uh, I think most of Not it's gonna be all. online. I don't think all, yeah. So, like Sigma said, I don't think all. I, I think I think this has already started because if we look at this year's regional schedule, we just had, I believe it was Dallas, Denver, 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 Denver. Close. It, I knew it was a D. It was a D, and it was in one of those states out west. And the, <laughs> um, so it's uh, so Denver. The Denver regional was solely TCG because. Um, I think you you know this very well, Scrawn, that the TCG makes more money than uh, oh, like ten than VGC, right? Of course it does. It makes you know an infinite times more money because the VGC makes almost nothing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you and buy I- the game and then you're done. Uh, with the TCG, you spend say a hundred dollars just to revamp your deck after every tournament. And you also see huge player turnouts compared to VGC. I mean, VGC numbers are probably in the low 100s right now. And like TCG, you're seeing crushing numbers of like thousands of players coming. More than ever before, yes. Yeah. And you're just seeing these crushing numbers. So people have determined that it's just becoming more profitable just to do TCG and no VGC. Mm -hmm. And, And so I think, I think we're at a place where I, so what I envision happening if we do go to an online, a more online meta for T, uh, VGC, which I think is something that we should do, um, because one that it that lowers the barrier for entry, and I think you could see more players come up, uh, just because they go, oh man, I'm I live in I live in Montana, because I guarantee you there's no Pokemon scene in Montana. Actually, let's use Wyoming. I I people, it's a <laughs> meme now. I I poop on Wyoming, and so. Wyoming uh, probably doesn't have that large of a TCG or Pokemon scene in general, but let's say little Timmy's got his switch. He can play sword and shield, but he, there's a battle competition, you know, let's say every month that can count for CP and he's actually really good at the game. He practices. Um, And so he goes online. He does really well. He gets his 400 championship points from the online competitions and gets like, he, he does really well, gets 800 championship points. So he actually gets paid to go to worlds. And you then know, he goes to point. Worlds, makes an in-person error, and gets disqualified. And that's fine. 
Uh, it's hard to get disqualified from a video game tournament. Uh, well, most from what I, my experience, most of the errors that people occur, that people encounter, um, are in the sign-up phase whenever you're filling out the team sheet. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, luckily, it should do that digitally, I think. Uh, yeah. Well, there are three steps. Uh, there's the manual hack check, there's the online hack check, and then there's the battle box locking. You have mm-hmm. to do all three in a big tournament. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, something that they might... They've, I, I honestly think that they are going to stick local. Uh, because, oh, no, no. I don't, I don't think they kill uh, it. I think they're going to have upcoming of like changes perhaps to hardware whether it's in the switch itself or like building better chargers or something like that because we know that the new switch systems are coming because of the wall street call or whatever uh, okay so so let's we let's have a good idea that, it's coming let's but. let's take that with a grain of salt because that everything from that came with one source right if you're if you're writing a really good journalistic article if you're writing a really good article as a journalist you should have more than one source. But it's a really good source, Fetch. <laughs> I, do, I don't care. Like, <laughs> because people are liars. Right. Like, it's just true. Like, I don't I don't care what you say. Like, um, who is the one? There was that one girl on Twitter that everybody was believing Pokemon Stars was coming out for the Switch or whatever. To be fair, just Eurogamer her. also put out an article about that, too. And yeah, but there... Exactly. Exactly. So there's like a bunch of garbage, but they're all basing it on her tweets and stuff like that. And so like, let's be, let's take it all with a grain of salt because everybody thought she was a reasonable source to think about and talk, talk to in the industry. Um, I granted, I think that the switch is due for a hardware revision. It's been two years now. Also Pokemon's coming. So Pokemon's coming. I can and believe usually comes a light with, version. We'll at something. least get a, I think we'll get a light version. I agree with that. Um, I, We'll see what happens. I mean, maybe there'll be a cool new switch that comes out, and I can go trade in my new my switch for a brand new switch that can do something. Um, maybe these will be moddable. Um, <laughs> uh-huh, well, no. <laughs> uh, the, Nintendo's done a really good job. I, I have to give them some credit. They've done a really good job killing the model, modding community. Uh, yeah, or for them, the hacking community. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, the pirate community, I should the say, pirate is the community. appropriate term. Yes. Um, yes, it took, what was it, like six years to get the basically unpatchable uh block ninja bypass in or something yes. like that it, uh, it was uh it was it's pretty it's pretty nasty it's really hard to do so but yeah i do think there's gonna be a hardware revision we might get better battery life but i don't know what, what better is right because right now sure right now you're talking is. like maybe six hours and so maybe they go oh man maybe you can do like maybe maybe you could do eight because like eight would be the point where i go for pokemon okay that's enough right well, but is pokemon gonna be stressful on the system like breath of the wild right yeah like, that's there's the next also question. other issues like connection. Yeah, connections is a huge thing too because you don't have the infrared port anymore. You're gonna need to. It will all have to be wireless or over the internet. Internet won't be feasible because you know one yep. internet can't like you know handle even eight people. It would just be so laggy and like there would be disconnects all the time. It, there needs to be uti- ac- uh, accurate utilization of the wireless uh, infrastructure in the switch for this to even be possible. It's just going to be, it's going to be, I don't know. I see this being a logistical nightmare. Yeah. Um, I, I, and I, I think, I think like you said, though, they're not going to kill the local scene right away. Um, I think that we're still going to see in 2020 for the 2020 meta, you're still going to see regionals happening. You're going to see these. But I think what you're going to also notice is that if people are going to come back from them and talk about the logistical nightmare they were. I wouldn't be surprised if they pushed it to just internationals as being the in-person events at some point. Yes. Because at yeah. that point, they could probably supply the televisions that they would need and land connectors, probably. They, I'd be wouldn't, need, they wouldn't use all televisions. That, that just, like, people keep bringing that up. It's not going to happen for everybody. Well, we're talking about oh, an no. international challenge, though. Maybe have requirements to get in so you don't have that many players. And it sounds like they're killing Pokin. And if we all go back and remember Pokin tournament, they in, like, the international challenge situation, they do have, like, a bunch of TV set up that nobody was using. Yeah, that that is true. That is true. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's going to be a huge resurgence of uh, population into sort into the VGC because of Sword and Shield, though. We'll, we'll definitely uh, yes, that. yes, I think you will. You'll see. You'll see more people come back to it. But I mean, if you look at all uh, VGC like numbers and you just pay attention throughout the years, it's more. It's more or less a sine wave. I mean, on the new on the new VGC year, you see it. You see the uptick. Granted, I will be completely honest with you. I don't see the hype 
for a new VGC meta, like I used, like I saw from going from X and Y to S- Sun and Moon. I saw a huge hype for like, oh man, I can't wait for that meta. Right now, I'm not seeing any of that really, like throughout the community. And I mean, I peruse like Reddit and like other other sections of the Pokemon community, and I just haven't heard that hype. Uh, I mean, it'll probably happen around Worlds a little bit, but we'll see. I, I don't oh, know. Yeah. I, we'll have I, to see I, more gameplay for Sword and Shield before people get I, excited. I, I think, think I think you'll see some people, but I don't know if I don't know if the hype's there really compared to what it was. Um, in previous generations, I, I you will see an uptick though. I like I'm not denying you won't see an uptick. I, I do I do think we'll start hear stories about logistical nightmares. Uh, <laughs> what did you what did you want to bring up Daytona Regionals? Uh, yeah, Daytona Regionals actually has a setup for N64 and GameCube games. Oh, that's for cool. people to play. So that's kind of cool. They have to have TVs for that. So maybe they're getting ready for. I I think we're just going to see more regionals go towards like the TCG only side. I can I, I see think, that too. I think I think you're going to see it happen, but then you're also going to have some that still play video game. The thing about the uh, Denver Regionals was it was a new tournament organizer that they were trying out, Cascade mm. Games, who used to be a Magic tournament organizer, but unfortunately they put all of their events under one tournament organizer for the past okay. few years, so Cascade was looking for something new, and they're like, yeah. I don't know. I think this kind of opens the door, though to tcg only tournaments that's really what i see yeah i hope they don't (laughs) i think there's a chance that they do but i hope that they keep local play because having a community of people who you can interact with in person rather than sitting in a dark basement is nice oh yeah no i i agree with you i just don't know if that's going to be the way things are going to go yeah it's Uh, not sure if it's i think i think something like what you do might happen like where because you're just like running a league essentially right i run a tournament a month is it is it like official TPCI though? Yes, it's sanctioned. Yeah, perfect. So like it's it's essentially like a league. Um basically. Uh, yeah. It is essentially a league and I think something like that can still probably happen. I just don't know if it can happen. I don't know. I I don't know. I see a, I see regionals kind of dropping off and regionals going online. Maybe you still have maybe you still have uh PCs, maybe you still have mid-season showdowns. I don't know. Um or maybe you say they switch it to and I I don't know. I'd be okay with like the Japanese structure too where they're just like hey here's a couple of tournaments do well in them then you get to go <laughs> right i mean that is, that is what the japanese structure for vgc is yeah these hundred people get to come to our championships yeah uh whenever jushiro came we actually saw uh, the line outside of a pokemon event in tokyo and it yeah. was very long and it was very like advertised and drummed up and oh like, yeah everyone outside looked super intense you know co- coded out in their you know you know suits of pokemon and stuff (laughs) suits of pokemon (laughs) you know like that sounds like a really bad D &D item this is my this is my cloak of pikachu it's like pajamas it's basically like pajamas like oh look i'm an embryon and it was just a bunch of people dressed up like that and like you know normal looking people too interesting backpacks and stuff you know how it is if you've ever been to a pokemon event it's like those types of people except you know in japan I fought against one of those in uh, in St. Louis. There was a guy who was wearing a Pikachu onesie. Nice. Um, and he was he was battling, and then I beat him. One he was of not, the, he was not very good. One of the highest ranked Pokemon professors wears his Snorlax one Snorlax onesie to events. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, that's cute. I mean, good for, good for him. <laughs> <laughs> good for him. But I don't know. I I mean, maybe you're right, Scott. I mean, I know there's people who want to have like that in line in in real life community, but I feel like the regional scene might be the first to go. I I think that if like uh the way that Pokemon tends to do things and like Nintendo in general, they want to keep up face value. It's it's in all honesty a Japanese principle to uh, look good at least on the surface and to look like you are professional and you know what you're doing and your events are successful and they will keep these at least some of the events running so they can take pictures and show oh yeah you yeah that's why we're saying you keep internationals we say you keep internationals you can take the pictures of internationals more than that for sure like Mm, i I don't know i don't see tpci i don't see tpci taking too many pictures at like st louis i'm gonna be completely honest or daytona this weekend yeah it's easter weekend and they decide to have a turn they don't even stream most of these regionals the thing so, is, there are Smash but, tournaments and Splatoon tournaments right now that are all online, but they this, have they ship in casters to actually announce these events and commentate. 
So you put in the spectator mode in the uh, in the game, and this is what you could do. Well, I just want to say this has been a nice discussion, but I hope you guys are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, were right about Let's Go. We'll be right about this. <laughs> and I was right about Let's Go being bad. <laughs> so we'll oh, see. No. We all agreed that it was going to be bad. Uh, <laughs> Let's Go almost killed your Poke Quiz run, so... <laughs> this is true. This is true. That's behind us now. I'm not looking back at that. <laughs> Good times, friends. Good times. But I don't know. We'll see what happens. I mean, only time will tell. I I have a, I have this inkling in my back in the back of my mind that I'm probably wrong. Um, but this is more of a wish list for me. Like, let's see it go online a little bit more, so people who are who don't have the abil- ability to have a local scene can have more of a chance to to go to worlds. You know what I mean? To have like that ultimate Pokemon experience and go to worlds. Yeah, it'll be nice if streamers are able to stream the exact way that the game is played yes yes i agree that will help Uh, grow the scene as well so yeah i agree with that so uh yeah i think that's where we'll end it and we're gonna take a short break and be right back at you guys with the pokemon of the episode hey everyone do you want some cool puckle swag you should head over to the t public store where you can buy cool shirts such as the PuckleCon 2019, not to mention you get it as a wall tapestry, which I'm seriously considering wearing as a cape to PuckleCon. You should too. And then, of course, you can always check out the Throw Pillow version as well. It's fantastic. I think you should buy it because the Throw Pillow actually looks just phenomenal. I can't believe it. But yeah, head over to the Puckle Tea Public Store. The link is in the show notes as always. So go go check it out. <laughs> episode and welcome to the pokemon of the episode our pokemon of the episode this week is national x number 197 umbreon the moonlight pokemon when this pokemon becomes angry it pours its pores secrete a poisonous sweat which it sprays at its opponent's eyes i'm upset that that's not a poison type dex entry um also i'm really uh, excited about his japanese name blackie yep let, let me translate that real quick i want to see what it Oh, no, that's Boraki, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, 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 nope, you're right, yep, mm-hmm, that's, that, that's offensive, yeah. yep, okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, so, Umbreon, <laughs> Umbreon's an evolution, so it actually gets some pretty decent stats. Um, its HP is base 95, and its special defense is base 130, and its defense is base 110, so it's a pretty bulky boy. Its attack, and it, everything else is pretty bad, because it's 65, 60, 65 on attack, special attack, and speed, respectively. But, I mean, that's not too bad. I mean, he's, he's a bulky boy. He can get some work done. He's a decent special wall. And so we decided, uh, because this was requested last week, that we kind of just jump into basic Umbreon bread and butter for the RU tier, because that's the tier that Umbreon's in. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of break down this team. We had a lot of fun with this team, and it was a lot of fun to play with. So we started with Umbreon. This is a pretty basic cleric set. So we ran Wish, Protect, Toxic, and Foul Play. Heal Bell is another option that you can run. We did find ourselves wanting that every once in a while, but we also found ourselves really wanting Toxic a lot of the time as well. Um, (laughs) And so 252 HP, uh, 252 Special Defense, and you run it. I don't even know what that nature is. Um, Calm. calm. Plus Spit F. Yes, plus Spit F minus Attack. So you run it Calm. And so you have an Umbreon, you know its two major weaknesses are going to be Fighting and Fairy, those are the two major weaknesses, um, and Bug as well on on a Dark-type Pokemon. And yep, so yep. Nidoqueen Nido actually fills that void very well in resisting all of those types. Nidoqueen is incredible on this team. Oh, it's also, yeah, it's done very well. And so we wanted to just kind of get Hazards up for this team and just get offer a little bit of support on the side. Um, I do think that yeah, there's one thing that I would change on this Nidoqueen Queen set. So we're, first of all, we're running Life Orb, Sheer Force, um, Stealth Rock, Earth Power, Ice Beam, Toxic, and then we're running a 252 Special Attack, 252 Speed. Um, this is Timid Nidoqueen. Queen. Uh, Sheer Force ability is fantastic. Uh, I would I would knock off the Toxic. I feel like we could probably put something else in that Toxic slot, like Sludge Wave or something. I don't know. Like I had a lot of success with Toxic, just predicting the switches, getting that poison on stuff. It really helps later on. Okay, it, it might it might be a playstyle thing because I mean that wasn't something that I would have done in my matches. I, but granted, I only played like three or four. Join the t- Church of Stall, Thatch Boy. <laughs> Join us. This would have been a fun team for Seth to build. We forgot to tell Seth about it. <laughs> 
so the other thing that was kind of problematic were, were hazards, and so that's where the, the next member of this team kind of kind of steps in. Yep, our next member is Mega Blastoise. It's Blastoise with a Blastoise Knight. I believe we were running max special attack and max speed. Yes, Timid because nature. that's the set they give you for reasons. <laughs> yep, and it's move pool. We aren't running Scald. We're running Rapid Spin because hazard removal. Dark Pulse because technically it gets stabbed with Mega Launcher. Same with Aura Sphere. Yeah. And then Ice Beam because Ice Beam is just great coverage and that's what we like to run. <laughs> Honestly, I'd be okay with swapping in Scald instead of Ice Beam. Yeah, because we have Nidoqueen with Ice Beam, so you could probably get away with it fine. Yeah, I'm going to do that for myself because I'm going to play with this team one more time after we're done. All right. And then we have the All-Star of the team. Yeah, the, the one that should have been the Pokemon of the episode, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, good old Normalium Z Shaman with Celebrate. It's so much fun. <laughs> so again, max special attack, max speed, timid nature. We have Celebrate, Seed Flare, because it's a Shaman, that's the attack you run. Air Slash, and Earth Power. I can see some utilization for like Psychic or something. I can see that too. I accidentally ran this team in OU, and I managed to take out a Chansey with max special defense just by spamming Seed Flare. <laughs> <laughs> you get the Spadef Josh pretty often, actually. I think it's like a 50% chance or something. It's 40. It's 40%. Okay. Yeah, it's it's like crazy. It's like, yeah, you can get a two-stage drop, by the way. Not just one. Uh -huh. It's a two-stage drop. So that's pretty big. Sp seed Flare is great. I love Seed Flare. And these last two Pokemon that we've got are the sort of enforcers of the team. They're the big attackers. They're going to punch your opponent in the face. Well, the first one, maybe not so much because it has really stubby arms, uh, but... He still runs Fire Punch. It's going to be Alola Golem, Alolan Golem, uh, with a Choice Band and Magnet Pull. This is obviously to take out Steel type, so yeah, we're running we're running uh, Fire Punch. Uh, the EVs on this are going to be 252 attack, 252 speed, and I believe it's a uh, Jolly Nature or Adamant, one of those. Uh, yeah, it's Adamant. Uh, we've got the attacks Wild Charge to get that stab. You got Earthquake for coverage, Fire Punch to punch those Steel faces. Mostly for uh, who is it? Uh, Bronzong. And let me just say, it's super fun to imagine a lowland golem trying to punch something. It's like, <laughs> it's like jabbing something while like rolling into them or something. I don't know. And of course, explosion for whenever you're at that last bit of HP and you just want to get that extra kick into your, and uh, hopefully turn that game around with that uh, sacrifice. I just saw there was a suggestion for a Lolan Golem when we were building this team. I think it was for Shaman. And it was just like, <laughs> oh, you should, you should run Shaman with a Lolan Golem for yes. support. And I was just like, I was like, yes. And of course, since I'm on this episode, the only way you can run this Alolan Golem and have it succeed is if you name it Margaret. Uh, <laughs> Margaret the Alolan Golem. And uh, next up, we've got an Embor. Uh, this is the other enforcer of the team. He likes running into stuff really hard and dealing a lot of damage and then fainting. Uh, it's Embor with an expert belt. You run Reckless, of course, because we're going to be running Flare Blitz and Wild Charge, and you get that Reckless boost on those damage-dealing moves to yourself. Uh, you run 252 Attack, 252 Speed, Jolly Nature, Flare Blitz, Wild Charge, Super Power, and for that uh, for other stab, and then Sucker Punch to get that last hit in when your opponent's about to KO you. Dude, I love this team, though. Like, this team it's has great. been so much fun to run. It's really good. <laughs> honestly, honestly, I know we built this team around Umbreon, but, like, the only change I think I would honestly make to this team is dropping Umbreon for Bronzong. For, like, a Honchkrow. Or, or even Honchkrow or something like that, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like, Umbreon's uh, the cleric of this team because you're wishing on your other team's team members and i think that if you utilize it correctly then it can be a very very important team member it's just a matter of you know sometimes we are like you guys are super offensive play styles i'd say more than like me or like I, or I wouldn't i wouldn't say super offensive i'm more in the middle i like balance yeah i like balance i don't i mean i can play i can play all of them i just really prefer balance but honestly like umbreon's quite i think it's really good on this team I think it's honestly, a, that, that's a good thing to bring up as play styles. I don't know if we, this is the proper time to talk about it or we'll talk about it for 30 minutes. <laughs> but like, uh, I mean, that, that is a big thing. I mean, I, I think you get better at Pokemon once you can play more play styles. It's also important to understand what you're most comfortable with as well. And understanding your opponent's play style. Yeah, because like, I, I mean, I, I remember coming back, this is just a short rant before we move on, but... Um, I do remember, like, early on in, like, my Pokemon playing, like, I was only comfortable with my playstyle. 
And then inevitably I started branching out and like, now I can run hyper offense. If somebody hands me a hyper offensive team, I can run balance because I like playing balance. That's my preferred play style. And then I can run stall if I have to run stall, but I will absolutely hate it. <laughs> like it just as like a spiritual person. I will, I will just hate it down to the core of my being because I think stall is cancer. Stick protect on everything and yeah. laugh at your opponents while you die inside. <laughs> yes. I just die inside. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to win this, but at what cost? Uh, <laughs> my soul <laughs> yeah so that, that that's a good place to stop we're gonna we're gonna kick it on over though guys to the mailbag it's mail time it's time for the mailbag send in your emails And welcome to the mailbag. The mailbag, as always, is brought to you by the energy drink, Green Tauros, the energy drink that gives you hopes. hopes. And as always, we will give out the Green Taurus badge if we remember. Um, that, I mean, I haven't even, I haven't even been lying about it now. <laughs> It's just where we are. For those yeah. of you new to the show, this is the segment where we read listener emails. You can send us an email at pucklepodcast at gmail.com, letting us know anything your, of your thoughts of Pokemon. We typically do have a uh, a question that we ask you. I forgot what last week's was. Um, I think it was just about whether or not we want to see uh, Sword and Shield go back to basics or if we want to see something new. How we all feel about that. I uh, think something about Breath of the Wild Pokemon is what you're talking about. I think that's I think that's what we were talking I think that's what that question encapsulates uh, that I just stated. So... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, of course, you can send in an email to pucklepodcast.gmail.com and probably get featured on the show as well. So let's dive into it. Our first email this week is going to be from Tank. Yep. Ohio Gozemas, uh, Thatch Son and his esteemed co-hosts. Tank here, longtime listener, first time writer. Let me just say, start off by saying, you have all brought nothing but joy into my life, and I am so thankful to be part of the Puckle community. I find myself singing the Puckle theme song to get myself through the tough times. Someone send me an FLAC file of that song, yeah? <laughs> okay, so wait, first of all, you're a patron. I know Tank is a patron, and patrons actually have access to all of the, like, versions of the tracks. Oh. It's, on, it's on Patreon.com. Just look. Oh, cool. <laughs> Neat. Cool. You can get that there. Uh, but really, thanks for all the hard work and for bringing me into a great community with open arms. Now, enough sappy stuff. Let's get down to business. I would personally, I personally would love to see Pokemon branch out into a massive Breath of the Wild type game. The immersion and countless hours of time you could play alone would alone be worth it. Can you imagine a huge group of Primeape running at you to beat you up instead of Boko Blitz? No. No, I, I mean... Mm, I don't know. I don't know if I'd feel comfortable stabbing them with swords. <laughs> <laughs> uh, however, I've learned with Game Freak that I am better off being patient for them to do it right than rush and beg for it and get something rushed and done terribly. I wanted a game like Smash Brothers, but Pokemon for so long. Then I got Pokken. I wanted a Pokemon game where I could physically throw a ball or a Pokemon in the overworld. Then I got Let's Go. <laughs> Not to say those games are bad, but they're really flawed. I feel like I ask too much of Game Freak. The universe will curse me. I'll wait patiently for Game Freak to finally feel like they're ready or willing to do it and do it right. Even if I'm 80 years old by then and there's 4,000 Pokemon. Also, did I hear Thatch say in the intro last week that he hates Togepi? <gasps> Angry face. Um, keep on rocking, Puckle and friends. Now that I've conquered my anxiety of sending in an email, hopefully I'll soon work up the courage to be on a live show one day. Yours always, Tank. You're more than welcome to be there. Uh, also, I think the Togepi thing was just me. Like, man, I just don't want to find a. I don't want to find a hook today. And so let me say something that's going to incite anger. And, uh, <laughs> apparently, it worked. Uh, <laughs> And you know, if you ever want to incite anger, you just have to name the episode New Gen 8 Legends Revealed? Question mark, question, question mark, in quotes. Exclamation point. Uh, <laughs> New Pokemon Leech? <laughs> right. Uh, that's what we do, yes. Um, <laughs> get all the, we just start naming our podcast like YouTube episode, YouTube videos. That's what we do. Yep. Make, make sure that they're always like maximum length and then you say, it. we'll get to that topic soon, but only for two minutes and at an unspecified time in the show. So you have to listen to everything. Also smash that <laughs> like button. Uh, <laughs> smash that like button, guys. It really helps subscribe. me out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Don't forget the but I don't know. 
I don't I don't know that I'd want Breath of the Wild to be Pokemon. I just, I just want to respond to that because I don't think so. Like it works well with Breath of the Wild because that is part of what a Zelda game is. Zelda wasn't that far off. Look at Ocarina of Time. It wasn't much different than like well, okay, it was different than Breath of the Wild, but it was linear. I would say I would say it was just linear Breath of the Wild. Like that's it, right? And I think that needs to be respected a little bit. Like the fact that the style of game lends itself to that. So like you're so no what you're so what you're saying here is I don't I don't want to see a development in Pokemon like we saw in Breath of the Wild. I want Pokemon to be a different game, um, in my mind here. Like like I agree, uh some of these things, like maybe we could see some change. I wasn't a big fan of Pokemon in the overworld in Let's Go. I'm gonna be completely honest. Not because it was in Let's Go, just in general. I'm not a big fan of Pokemon in the overworld. I think it really ruins your uh I think it ruins what Pokemon is at its core. And part of the excitement is like, oh, what did I find? Um, I, we said it on the show before. I think a good middle ground for this is something like Dexnav. Mm. Or, um, you know, honestly, like, what if we had an open world game, but it was just like an open world Pokemon Snap game? Uh, I don't yes, know that I would buy that. Let, let's move the on-rail shooter game into the open world genre. That That's how we work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes! Like, you don't have to worry about catching stuff. It's just a basic camera function programmed in the game. Except you, like, walk around and you, like, find Pokemon in their habitats doing stuff. or And know, they beat interact. you up. Like... Yeah, you run away. Or, like, you have one Pokemon that you can, like, ride around away from stuff. Like a Stoutland or something. <laughs> We're gonna leave that there. <laughs> hey! Hey! You know, people send in emails about this. That way, Thatch has to confront this eventuality. <laughs> eventuality. It's gonna happen now. It's gonna. You're they horrible. won't even make an on rails Pokemon Snap again. Why would they? Yeah. Make <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's get this next one from Mido. All right, dear Thatch and his elegant, elicid enthusiasts. Whilst on my usual cryptid hunts. I was accosted by several horrifying Easter monsters flaunting their unnatural <laughs> offspring at me when, <laughs> when an idea struck me. What if Sword and Shield implemented holiday events or more seasonal daily events further than what we've been had before? What would you guys think of that or how they could work on that? Pokemon is an Animal Crossing, but hot damn, if I didn't wish it was, you're... Yours adoringly, Mido the Galar region. Nice. I like this question. I really do. Because I, so I think, I think like he said, it shouldn't be Animal Crossing. Um, I, I think that we could go back to like gold and silver because I, I, I think I might've mentioned this off air actually. Uh, and I think it's a fantastic idea. I don't remember if it was on or off air. I talked to people too much. Um, but what, ha what my idea was you have something like the bug catching contest happen again. Right. And let's go back to the Splatoon reference again. Like, look at what Splatoon's doing. And I think, what is it called? Salmon Run? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Imagine Salmon Run, but Pokemon. And hear me out. So let's take the bug catching contest. The bug catching contest in Gold, Silver, and Crystal only went Monday or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Imagine we have something like that. Like, each day, there's there are some days you can play these events, some days you can't. And let's say that the three of us could get in a room together and do a bug catching contest together. Yeah. Well, yeah. Just throwing it out eh. there. I think they could retool eh. uh, the global link events to that. Possibly. I, I would be okay with doing it. Like I would have a lot of fun if I could get puckle people together and do something like that. I think that would be a really, really cool uh, thing to do. Something different to do with your friends other than Pokemon battling. You know, I think they tried that before. Uh, in what sense? Remember, remember the online carnival in Gen Four games. I think that was done very poorly, though. <laughs> I'm talking, I'm talking about doing like an actual but you capture. Could of actually, it. like link up with your friends and stuff and play mini games. These it aren't was... mini. This is this is still Pokemon at its core, right? Because this is uh, this is the bug catching contest. Yeah, and the, I, I mean, 
Who and wants I think to catch bugs though. Like I don't. Well, then you get those bugs based on a spinners. based on a random score instead of being compared to some NPC. I maybe mean, <laughs> Scr- maybe Scrod, you caught something, right? I, I would say this would be something where you don't you try not to be on like Discord talking to each other, be like, dude, I just caught a level fourteen pincer. It's like screw you, I want to go catch something better, right? And uh, I'm not saying do bug catching contests ex- exactly, right? I'm saying doing something like bug catching contest. I just think Let's it's a. Re- I think I think it's a really good example of something that they can do. Um, a scallopede I, ran over my mom. But I think it's a really good way to get kind of that feeling of, oh man, my friends are in my game, right? Because that's yes. always been something that I think people have wanted in a Pokemon game is I want to be able to play in the same Pokemon world as my friends. And we kind of had that with the Outer Link, which really yes. sucked. You could turn um, into a Meowth and then block their path. It was great. <laughs> yeah, it was, which was, which is stupid in and of itself. And it's uh we we kind of have that, but I think I think doing something like this is a really good middle ground, and I I, I don't know maybe the game freak should hire me, but um I, I I I I mean this is this is legitimately the only idea that I've ever had that I really wish I could like get into game freak's ear. I mean what because if they, I think they would go for it instead of swarms. They did what they do on Pokemon Go, where okay. it's like Nest. hey for this week there are bugs spawning that usually don't spawn, and then you compete with friends like that. I would be okay with that as well. I just, I, I'm kind of over the, uh, cause I feel like this is, I feel like doing something like the bug catching contest in real time is more dynamic. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm kind of over the idea of just like leaderboards, right? I don't want to be like, oh man, my friend caught this many wormples and be like, I didn't catch that many wormples. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I'd much rather have something more dynamic like bug catching contest. And well, I mean, no, you can change what... that. You can change it to like fishing contest. <laughs> sure, <laughs> um, that's not Animal uh, Crossing like at all. <laughs> yeah, ex- well, you change it to the fishing contest or something else. I mean, you could. I I still think you do it more like the bug catching contest, where I, you could do it with something else. I am sure Game Freak can come up with something else. But uh, so next time I see uh, see Janichi Masuda, the, I'm gonna drop that in his ear ball and see what he says. I'll write him a letter. I'll tweet at him. <laughs> uh, I'll tweet at him. Oh, no. yeah. uh, so out of these emails i think mido has a green taurus badge and tank's email is really good should we give her a green taurus badge sure i mean it's the only other one and it was actually good so yeah, yeah. we could do that Sounds um good. and if you want to email us next week at the show at puckle podcast at gmail.com you can do so by going to your email and opening it up and saying to puckle podcast gmail.com and we would like to give you a writing prompt as we do every week and we want to know how do you feel about vgc do you think you you would like to have it online would you like it to stay in person? Would you like both? Send that in. Uh, PucklePodcast at gmail.com. And of course, if you want to keep up with Puckle, you can, or just get more Puckle this week, you can go to Puckle Plus, the feed where we have even more podcasts for you guys to listen to every Thursday. So definitely check that out. And if you want to even see more content throughout the week, Jushiro, myself, and Orange always stream over at twitch.tv slash the Puckle Podcast. You can watch some crazy cool stuff over there. And if you want to help support the show, you should follow us on social media, first of all, to learn every, all the cool things that are going on at Twitter, Instagram, and then the other things that exist. And those are the two that we care about. Um, <laughs> and then uh, also, if you haven't already and you want to keep up and watch some cool battles, uh, you can definitely check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Puckle Podcast. And finally, if you want to support the show monetarily, you can do so in a few ways. First of all, by going to Twitch, using your Twitch Prime subscription on us. We always appreciate that. You can always go over to uh, our T Public store and buy some cool swag, whether that be a cool uh, scrawn, scrawn face shirt thing um, oh. slash tapestry. Yeah, did you know your face is on T Public, by the way? Not a real, not your real face, like yeah, like the face. cartoon depiction of me yes. the basket man. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you can get that. You can I'm go buy it on a Tox Apex and drinking soda. I think. Ooh, <laughs> is it cranberry? <laughs> <laughs> you had better believe that there's some cranberry sprite in that soda. And then I'm finally- not saying it's entirely cranberry sprite. It might be something else, but yeah. Finally, you can support the show by going to <laughs> patreon.com slash puckle podcast where you can get cool rewards such as the weekly Pokemon of the episode distribution. Like this week, it's going to be shiny Umbreon because we can't distribute Shaman. And so go go check out patreon.com slash puckle podcast if you're interested in doing supporting the show in that way. We appreciate our patrons as always. Uh, so I guess that's it, though. And I'm Trainer Thatch. I'm Zakran. I'm R. Sigma. And here in the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's closing time. Yeah.
We here at the Pucko Podcast like to thank our patrons for supporting the show. So thank you to Juicebox, Greg, Michaela, Viger, Gus, Duly Noted, Ten Little Men, Andrea, Fluffy Swims the Cot, Shamu, Snag, Dexio, Christian, Chishiro, Rotted, Ryan, Seth Vilo, Minor Manetric, Claude, Chris, Tim, Steve, Josh, Doc McStuffles, Nathan Jester, the Golden Klefki, the British Gent, Trevor, TJ, Alex, Doc Knox, Tr- Dennis, Echo, Michael, Taylor, Shambles, Andrew, Birdkeeper Cobra, Dark Shaggy, Jeremy, Louise, Wade, Kevin, Justin, Eric, Tank, Tavis, Jonathan, Greg, Bodtack, Chris, Alec, Mikey, Ozzy, Josh, Dark Flame, Beniza, Coop, Hoot Q, Half Full Reviews, Rory, Sparky, Nick, Dylan, Shira, Ironcaster, Orange Avenger, Thomas, Zero, Curtis, Anime Gravy, Hazelnut, Joseph, Travy, Julie, Alex, and the Real EV. <laughs> uh, you too can also be a patron by going to patreon.com slash buckle podcast to get to the point where Thatch rips his eyes out because there are too many patrons. So go ahead, go over there, do it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the flip flop. <laughs>